So the point of this video lesson now is to just show you how to start designing the business card. And you already know how to use Photoshop at this point, so I'm really not interested in showing you a bunch of different ways to design something as much as showing you a few little things to consider as you design your business card so you get the right uh, results that you're looking for. So like any good cooking show, I've already cooked up some typography so you don't have to sit here and watch me fiddle with it for an hour. Uh, so here's some simple text I've got for some contact information simply using the original font that we used on the logo Abolition Round paired with Lato. So you're welcome to take those fonts and create something if you want. Again, this isn't necessarily about the design right now as much as it is, is about uh, some just different things to pay attention to. So one of the things I want to show you is when you're working with fonts on a business card, the smallest font size you should really go to would be seven point font. So if I look up here, I can see I've got seven point font. And uh, now the, the, the thing I would say, you know, would be the exception to this would be this graphic designer text because it is in all caps. I did crunch it down to six and a half. So that is the absolute smallest you'd ever want to go on the size. Right now it looks fine because we're zoomed in, but when you actually look at this at the viewing distance or the size of the card, you know, anything smaller than that is going to be nearly impossible to read. So that's one thing to consider. The next tip that I've learned in making business cards is, well, we, we talked about how the width is this is three and a half inches and the height is two inches. So if I draw a rectangle shape and I free transform this and let's just make it two inches wide, so two inches by two inches tall, we have a perfect square and this is actually a great uh, ratio here to you know you don't have to actually show the square on your card but let me just show you something real quick if we snap this into where the actual trim size is not the actual bleed but the trim size and we drop a guide either on this side or maybe we move it over to the left here and drop another guide over here and I'll turn my shape back off it creates it's kind of tough to see in that white background but it creates uh, a natural break in the design, a nice grid, I guess you could call it, to drop in a logo. So I'm just going to jump over here to this other logo that we designed uh, in a previous section and let's just paste this over here to the side here. So you know I don't necessarily love the fact that it's my name twice or anything like that I'd probably just do the icon in fact let's just go ahead and do that but let's let's pretend like we had uh, this was the actual business name and that might be the personal name right here so if I align this shape within this box so from here two inches across which was to there and now I hold down alt and shift while I transform this to the center if I turn my guides back off you can see that this is a nice division uh, nice centered, not quite centered, but um, just it looks visually appealing. A better example of that might be if I just grab this icon here. So I'll double click in here and grab that. Command V to paste. Same thing. So if we kind of use that bounding box as a guide, you can see that visually it's it's pretty nice. Now granted this card is incredibly simple and the point is more so to show you that um, that little trick as far as the two inch by two inch square thing for when you're designing things. Now you could also make this a lot more um, apparent by actually drawing that or, or actually putting it within a color of some kind. So let me uh, turn off my guides here real quick and let's scale this up a touch. So we could do something like that that's a lot more um, apparent and now I've got this white box around it that's actually gonna get trimmed off but what we'd want to do now that we have the square is we would want to scale it up both to the height and now I don't want to do left and right here I just want to scale this to the right so it goes beyond that bleed and sometimes it's hard to see what it looks like with the bleed so what I do I'll turn on my guides again I'll get my rectangle tool by hitting the letter M and then I'll click and drag to my trim size area and then I'll select the inverse command shift I where is that at here? Inverse, there we go. Shift Command I. And now it selects just where my bleed area is. I'll make a brand new layer and I'll hit Command Shift in the right bracket to throw it all the way to the top. I'll hit the letter I to get my eyedropper tool and I'll sample the canvas color. And I'll hit Alt Delete to fill just that selection area with the canvas color. And I usually just call this layer Bleed Mask because I'm literally masking my bleed just so at least visually as I'm looking at this I can kinda get a feel for where the actual size of the business card is. So hopefully those tips help you create something that's a little more balanced as well as kinda getting an idea of 
the you know the, the size of the card. The next thing I would do is if I was going to send this comp to a client, I would actually hit Command Zero to make this as big as I could. I'd hit Command Shift Four to take a screenshot on a Mac on a PC. You can just hit Print Screen, and then I would just click and drag. So once I get it started, I hit Spacebar to move it up to the top left and then drag down to the bottom right and the reason why I would take a screenshot this way is because then the client doesn't see the extra space around it. it's going to get cut off anyway and wonder why hey you know that's a lot of space around the text or whatever when really it's actually getting trimmed to there so now when I jump to my desktop and I open up that screenshot that I just took we can see that it just shows that area I took the picture of so that was be how that's how I work with uh, uh, this the creation of the business card but again feel free to push this design further and to create something that you truly love. Now the next thing I would do, once I get the front how I like it, I'd go ahead and save that and then I'd hit Command Shift S to save a copy. We'll call this business card back, hit save. And now what I can do is kind of go crazy and maybe just turn off my content here. Pull those out to a separate group. Let's turn that off one more time. There we go. You know, and maybe fill the back with just the color, with a matching color, and maybe do something creative with the logo. And, you know, depending on the logo, this might not be a good solution. You don't usually want to dilute the brand this way, but it really just depends on what you're doing. And in this case, it's my own thing, and I really don't care because I'm having fun with it. So this is another way to take, you know, elements of the brand and create something that's unique, fun to look at, and that reflects, you know, pieces of the brand and, and still looks good together as one whole unit. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll hit Command S to save this, and that's all it took for the back. It really took me just a couple seconds to create something that's um, interesting, and if you wanted to, you know, you could push this further and maybe drop in your company's logo over the top here. Let me jump back over here, Command V to paste, scale this up, and maybe put this in a white you know, and maybe that's good enough, right? So you just gotta play with it and figure out what you like, what works well. In this case, I'm just kinda goofing around, but hopefully that helps you out. And in the next lesson, what we're gonna do is show you how to uh, set up your files for special processes like UV coding and spot gloss and things like that, as well as how to export these for print.